Why will the dragon Satan be chained for a thousand years, the longest sentence ever to be heard on earth? This question, shrouded in mystery and intrigue, has been a topic of much debate and discussion. This isn't a tale from a fantasy novel or a plot from a blockbuster movie. It's a narrative woven into the fabric of one of the world's most widely read books, the Bible. It's a story that seeks to explain the origin of evil and its eventual end. It's a narrative about power, rebellion, war, creation, and ultimately, redemption. It depicts the journey of Lucifer, the fallen angel, who transforms into Satan, the dragon, and his eventual confinement. But why a thousand years? Why not eternity? What's the significance of this specific time span? To answer these questions, we need to delve into the biblical account of how it all began. In the book of Isaiah, the Bible vividly describes Lucifer's fall. Lucifer, once an angel of light, a son of the morning, was not content with his celestial status. He harbored an ambitious desire, a desire that would lead to his downfall. He yearned to ascend into heaven, to exalt his throne above the stars of God, to sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north, to ascend above the heights of the clouds. In his heart he declared, I will be like the Most High. But such arrogance and pride did not go unnoticed. The heavens shook with the audacity of his ambition. His once sacred position became tarnished by his hubris. His grand declarations of self-exaltation were met with a divine decree of judgment. His desire to ascend was met with a divine decision to descend. His dream of exaltation led to his destiny of humiliation. The Bible tells us, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. This was the prophecy of his fate, the consequence of his audacious ambition. Cast down from his lofty heights, his brilliance dimmed, his radiant light extinguished, and his glory faded. From an angel of light, he became a creature of darkness. From a son of the morning, he became a harbinger of the night. His downfall was not a result of divine caprice, but a consequence of his own choices. His ambition to be like God led to his downfall, his transformation from Lucifer, the angel of light, to Satan, the adversary. His desire to ascend above the heights of the clouds resulted in his descent into the depths of the pit. This tale of Lucifer's downfall serves as a sobering reminder of the destructive power of arrogance and pride, the dangers of ambition untempered by humility, and the dire consequences of challenging the sovereignty of the Most High. Lucifer was cast down to Sheol, the lowest depths of the pit. Fast forward to the book of Revelation where John is shown a vision of a great war in heaven. Picture this. The serene tranquility of the heavenly realm shattered by a cataclysmic conflict. On one side Michael, the mighty archangel, leading an army of celestial warriors. On the other side the dragon, the fallen angel Lucifer commanding a legion of rebellious spirits. This wasn't just a battle, it was a cosmic showdown between good and evil, a celestial rebellion which echoed through the vast expanses of heaven. With unyielding resolve, Michael and his angels fought valiantly against the dragon and his minions. This wasn't just a struggle for power, but a battle for the very essence of truth and righteousness. The dragon, once a bearer of light, now a symbol of deceit, fought back fiercely. His tail swept a third of the stars from the sky, representing those angels who had chosen to follow him in his rebellion. He sought to devour the child of the woman clothed in the sun, a clear representation of his intent to undermine God's plan and deceive the world. But here's the thing. The dragon and his angels did not prevail. They were no match for the divine might of Michael and his forces. The heavenly realm, the sacred abode of the Most High was no place for the likes of them. So the dragon was cast out, hurled down from the heavenly heights to the earth below. This once radiant angel, now the serpent of old, the deceiver of the world, was banished. And his angels, those who had chosen to follow him in rebellion, they too were cast out with him. The dragon was cast to earth, and his angels with him. From his heavenly perch to the earthly plain, the dragon's fall was complete. It was here, upon the earth, that he would continue his campaign of deceit, sowing discord and wreaking havoc. But remember this, his defeat in heaven was a testament to his ultimate fate. The dragon's days even on earth are numbered. After Lucifer was cast out, God decided to create man to replace Lucifer. This was no ordinary creation, it was a divine act of love, an opportunity to fill the void left by Lucifer's fall. The Father, Son and Holy Spirit crafted man in their own image, bestowing upon him the authority to rule over the earth. A paradise known as the Garden of Eden became man's dwelling place, a haven where he could commune with God. Envious of this divine bond, Lucifer, now the serpent, sought to corrupt mankind. 
He slithered into the garden, cunning and deceitful, whispering temptation into the ear of Eve, the first woman. The allure of knowledge, the promise of becoming like God was too enticing. Eve and subsequently Adam succumbed to the serpent's persuasion, partaking in the forbidden fruit, an act of disobedience against God. This single act, this moment of weakness, marked the fall of man. The divine connection with God was severed. Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden, a poignant symbol of their separation from God. The serpent reveled in this victory, his deceit had successfully marred God's perfect creation. Yet this was not the end. From this moment a battle ensued, a battle for the souls of mankind. The serpent, relentless in his pursuit, sought to destroy anyone who carried the seed of God. His malevolence grew with each passing era, his form evolving from the slim snake in the Garden of Eden to the fiery red dragon depicted in Revelations by John the Beloved. This dragon, with seven heads and ten horns, embodied the magnitude of the serpent's evil, a stark contrast to his initial form. His increased size and formidable appearance reflected his insatiable desire for power and control, his relentless quest to lead mankind away from God. And so the once slim snake in the garden grew into the dragon that John saw in Revelation. A chilling reminder of the fall of man and the ongoing battle between good and evil. When Jesus returns for his millennial reign, he will command the dragon to be bound for a thousand years. This binding is not merely a punishment, but a profound symbol of God's ultimate dominion over evil. The dragon, the old serpent, also known as Satan, who has been a constant source of deceit and discord, will be chained for a thousand years, the longest sentence ever to be heard on earth. The binding of the dragon signifies a period of peace and righteousness, a time when the nations of the earth will no longer be deceived by the evil machinations of the dragon. It is a time when the earth will rest from the tumultuous upheaval of sin and rebellion. It's a time when the will of God will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This millennium of peace is not just about the absence of the dragon's influence but also about the presence of Christ's reign. With the dragon bound, the world will be in the capable hands of the Prince of Peace. This is the same Jesus who walked on earth, healed the sick, raised the dead, and laid down his life for the salvation of mankind. His reign will bring justice, righteousness, and peace on a scale we've never seen before. But what will this mean for the world? Imagine a world without conflict, without deceit, without evil. A world where love reigns supreme and peace is not just a dream, but a reality. This is what the binding of the dragon will bring. It's a glimpse of God's kingdom come, a foretaste of the eternal state where God will wipe away every tear, and death shall be no more. This binding of the dragon is a testament to God's power and sovereignty. It's a declaration that no matter how fierce the dragon, no matter how cunning the serpent, God's power is greater. And in the end, God's love, justice, and peace will prevail. The dragon will be chained, the nations will no longer be deceived, and only the peace of Christ will reign. This is the promise of the millennial reign, a time of peace and righteousness under Christ's rule, a time when the binding of the dragon will usher in a new era of God's kingdom on earth. So, why will Satan the dragon be chained for 1,000 years? Let's quickly recap. From the time of Lucifer's fall as chronicled by Isaiah and Ezekiel, we've seen a tale of pride and rebellion, of a celestial being seeking to exalt itself above all else. This hubris led to the great war in heaven, where Lucifer, now Satan, and his angels fell from grace. In response God created man, a replacement for the fallen angel, placing them in the Garden of Eden. Yet Satan, ever deceitful, led man into sin, causing their expulsion from the Garden. This marked the beginning of Satan's reign as the dragon, a reign marked by deception and destruction. But here's the hope, the promise. In the millennial reign of Jesus, the dragon will be bound for 1,000 years, a period of peace where evil will cease, and only the peace of Christ will reign. Because when the light, Christ appears, the darkness, the devil, must disappear.